teachers professors of Reddit what is the difference between students of 1999, 2009, 2019? Computer science teacher here. There has been a definite move over time from trying to learn how to do something towards trying to find a ready-made answer. Whenever I set my students an assignment, we discuss what they should do if they get stuck, typically involving rereading notes, looking at the resources they've been given, looking at prior work, perhaps finally using web-based resources. Students have always, as long as the web has been a thing, skipped straight to the last one. Bit the subtle changes rather than searching for how to do something. Most now just search for a fully formed complete answer which they can copy and hand in. I've been a teacher for 15 years and one thing I've noticed is that in recent years the breakfast club stereotypes like jocks, nerds, etc. seem to be falling by the wayside and kids seem to be hidden under many layers of irony. That's a really interesting observation. Also, just to be safe I will never eat a pancake made by a teacher. I've been teaching high school since 1993. Students are less homophobic by a long shot, at least where I've been. There is still homophobia but they can't be open about it. Students talk about things like depression and mental illness more. Whether the prevalence rate for things like depression actually is higher or not I don't know, but it's more talked about. Attitudes to a school are about the same. Hard workers, average workers, and slackers are still probably the same proportion. Obviously the use of technology is dramatically increased, which is good and bad. It's definitely made research super easy. There's more awareness of bullying, though sometimes this term gets thrown around too casually. Students in special ed are no longer openly mocked. Students are larger, a lot larger. Dating in an official sense doesn't seem to occur anymore. Just seems like FWB, or without benefits, is the typical arrangement. Seems like students spend a lot more time inside than 20 years ago. Comma seems like students spend a lot more time inside than 20 years ago. This is one thing my dad has been saying for years now. He's right, though. I hardly ever see kids outside besides if they're waiting for their school bus, or walking home around here. He's one of those people who says tech is making kids lazier. In 1999, class was super noisy when you came in. Everyone talking and then quieting down when you started teaching. Now, like walking into a funeral home. Cell phone silence. Lawnmower parents, more emphasis on test scores, and more reliance on technology, less interest in learning and too much interest in social media. As someone who taught in the last two of these decades, there's a whole bunch of things that have changed. 1. Students are now consumed with their grades more than what is healthy. 2. To that end, many have a disconnect between their grades and their assignments. I've lost count of but I worked really hard as a rebuttal to a C or B assignment where they didn't follow instructions. 3. Students are now digital natives, and educators were being told that this group was going to be overwhelmingly tech savvy. I've not seen that happen, at all. Instead, I see a lot of students who know how to use their devices, but are absolutely befuddled by how to approach them if anything goes wrong. They seem to view their laptops computer cells as arcane devices. 4. There's also less curiosity and ownership of their own learning. In recent years, I've found myself getting emails such as how do you double space a document or just getting a document that isn't double spaced. I've met college age students who don't know how to use a thumb drive. Google it, folks. 5. They also view education as something to be handed to them passively. If it's not specifically spelled out, it won't get done. An example. A student just asked me if we needed a textbook for the class. Yes, I said, the one on the syllabus and the one we've been reading out of and taking reading quizzes on and discussing in class for the past 9 weeks. Oh, they replied, well you didn't tell me that I needed to buy it. These are all very general statements, but these are growing trends I've seen in the past, say, 5 to 6 years. Been teaching since 2006. Kids are getting worse with computers due to them mostly using smart devices. I'm spending more time teaching things like how to double click and enter a URL than I used to. Otherwise they seem the same though. It's the parents that are different. They are overextended and their kids are suffering since their parents don't have the spoons to engage in their education as much as they need to. 
my friend who's a first grade teacher says that kids are more anxious, less able to self-soothe, and unprepared to solve even basic, first grader level, problems themselves. A reason for that could be that students are relying far too much on the internet and social media to solve all their problems, or their parents are coddling them too much. I've taught, still teaching, elementary, mainly first third, since the mid 90s. Differences. 1. Men are more obese kids. I'm talking obese at age 6, not just a little chubby, either. 2. Men are more attention problems, not just the severe ones, at ADHD, but kiddos who just have trouble focusing. Now, I don't want to hear a lot of backlash from non-teachers who say we mean teachers expect kids to sit all day and work. My students change activities frequently. They are allowed to stand instead of sit. We also do quite a bit of hands-on stuff. But over the years, I've noticed a huge problem with focusing and getting things done. Three kids don't read as much. They spend free time on electronic devices. It's addictive and I'm guilty. 2. I love to read. But I find myself here on Reddit or elsewhere on the internet instead of actually reading books. But I'm 49. These kids need to read. And they need to read books. 4. Their vocabulary and speaking skills are lacking. Why? Well. The speech language teacher at my school gave her theory. She worked in the private sector over the summer. Parents would drop off their young kids to her and sit in the lobby on their phones. As we all do. Over the summer she would assess these kiddos and most all of them were of normal intelligence and ability. So why are the kiddos severely behind in speaking and language skills? She claims that parents are not speaking enough to their children. We adults spend so much time on our phones and laptops and are not having enough conversations with our children. I have to agree with this. 15 slash 20 plus years ago, we were all not glued to our phones. People conversed more with their kids in the past. They are more alike than different, but students of 1999 were more likely to be able to write their own web page in raw HTML. And students in 2019 aren't sure how to make a basic powerpoint or attach something to an email. I've been doing this long enough that I remember when the professors were baffled by all things computerish and the students were impatient with how clueless we were. And now it's reversed. It's that, and even my smart students have zero idea how to use an apostrophe. That's something that's shown up in the past 5 to 7 years. I blame autocorrect. Thought of a couple more. In 1999. There was a hum of chatter with occasional outbreaks of laughter before class started, and I had to quiet them down to begin. Now there might be one or two people talking, but everybody else is glued to their phone. Also, back then there was a lot of flirting before class, and male and female students mixed and sat next to each other. Now it looks like an 8th grade dance. Females on this side, males on that. Okay, two more, and then I'm done. In 1999. My female students tried to dress nicely for class, and my male students showed up in sweats and a t-shirt. Complete reversal now, the males dress fashionably and the females wear sweats and hoodies. And in 1999, just about everybody wore a baseball cap. When it came time to take a test, I had to tell them to turn it around or take it off. Not because I thought they might have answers written in the bill, but because I needed to see where their eyes were. When I gave that instruction, Hats were turned on all but one or two heads. It was just as much part of the college student uniform as a backpack. These days, I might have one student in a ball cap once or twice a term. I think everybody puts more effort into their hair. I feel like that tech savvy bit is taken for granted. It's expected that kids these days just know how to work all these applications because of how ubiquitous they are. But when I was in school I had to be taught to use Word and PowerPoint and Excel and I'm not very old. Only like 25. I can't speak to 1999. But I was tiering college in 2009 and currently teach high school, juniors and seniors. Some of the most distinct changes are below. These were present in 2009 and 2010, my first year of high school teacher, but rarely. Now most of these things are happening daily with most students. 1. Students are much more open about fracking drinking. It is nothing for students to talk about a kegger in front of me and when I remind them that I can hear them, they blow me off. 2. Grades are the most important thing in the entire world and there is a bigger disconnect in grades and understanding. 
there is a lot of I tried really hard, I deserve an A even though they fully admit they didn't understand the work. 3. There is desire to know what is going on. If I forget one night to post the homework on the Google website they simply don't do the homework, even if it is listed on the syllabus, was on my whiteboard, and was verbally stated. 4. There is no desire to look up information on their own. I am constantly asked for extra practice worksheets, so I tell them to google them if I am busy and can't do it that second. Students almost always respond with but I tried that and couldn't find anything. I then google balancing equations practice problems on their device and show them how the entire first three pages of google are practice problems. 5. And the biggest one is having absolutely no idea the power of their technology. In 2009-2010, every student who had a TI-83 calculator knew how to use it, could program games into it, since this was before every kid having a smartphone, and knew how to use it to cheat. Now the $100 plus TI calculators are simply used as fancy basic calculators. They are shocked when I show them how to program in basic numbers or use a built-in app. Even on their iPhone calculator, most of them didn't know if you tilted your phone sideways it became a scientific calculator. Being a teen in 2009 I can't believe that the students in 2019 are that different. My students today are way overprotected and far more nervous than when I started teaching in 1994. For example I have had several students, typically girls, who at 12 or 13 have literally never been alone, then have not been on a bike ride alone or a walk around their block alone. Their parents are so afraid of stranger danger that they are preventing their students from having the necessary alone time to get into trouble and try to solve problems independently. The students are far more prone to anxiety, depression, cutting and suicidal idealization than previous generations of students. Probably related, but who knows. Students are afraid of risk and need teacher support and because it is available all the time they kind of expect it. I had a student email me an hour ago because he did not understand the question on his homework. And I responded with some additional info to support this student. On a Sunday morning, of course I am the one who taught them how to actually email something and I answered the email. So perhaps I am a contributor to this issue. 20 years ago he would have had to figure it out and give his best guess and let the chips fall. I'm 17 and this is way too true. My mom never lets me go anywhere, and it's terribly frustrating. Yesterday I rebelled by going on a stroll in the nature preserve by my house with a friend. Because I, at 17, am not allowed to do that. In 2009, kids were blown away if you could reference online memes. Nowadays, not so much. They're more likely to sneer and call you a boomer. Okay boomer. I work in a college and hear the stories of professors. While students are obsessed with grades and bugging the professor on what they have the minute you say I have your grades. Come to my office between 11 and 1 and get it and if you're missing anything he'll let you know not a soul showed up. No emails saying hey I have classes then can I come in at a different time. Students have been drying in professors offices over grades and it's not the ones who really do try but just don't get it. It's the ones that are missing two labs. 10 homework assignments, and missing quizzes but feel they deserve a C in the class because they show up almost every day. During labs and such like others have said they don't read instructions or if it doesn't explicitly say something they won't do it, like turn the meter on sorta of thing. Professors have had parents call their office demanding to know what their child's grade is. Professors have to remind them that your child is over 18 and legally an adult I cannot divulge that information to you. Or parents want to know why their kid is almost failing their class and why they are making the class so hard. I was a university advisor for many years and now I'm an adjunct professor. Students today refuse to use their textbook take notes to their detriment. They'll turn in papers with applications of definitions concepts they found by googling as opposed to ones discussed in class or in the text. It's amazing how much research they'll do that goes against what has been taught, and is easily at their fingertips. I'm a high school student but I will like to say thank you for all of you teachers for dealing with us and teaching us. You are amazing and awesome. You're not getting an A anyway Raven. Not a teacher, 
but in higher education, they really really want guidance. A scary amount of guidance. I don't know anyone else's experience, but when I was a kid and had a question my parents couldn't answer, they would say well, there are three sets of encyclopedias down the hall and you have a library at school. Figure it out. Not a teacher in the strictest sense, but I do a lot of tutoring, and I briefly taught some junior compico courses at the local elementary school. The biggest thing I've noticed is an overabundance of lawnmower parents. Parents who plow down any obstacle in their kids' paths without ever letting them challenge themselves. I had parents who would do their kids' assignments for them because they were hard, then yell at the instructors when their children weren't learning. The other big thing is that knowledge of proper grammar seems to have really decreased. I know high school honors students who can barely string together a coherent sentence. I read and edit essays resumes research papers sometimes. And they were often borderline illegible because nobody knew basic spelling and punctuation. I had to actually teach people, some of whom were in AP English classes, that you need to capitalize proper nouns and put quotes around dialogue. People also don't know how to use word processors for some reason. Loads of students had no idea how to even center text, so they'd just press space until their titles were roughly in the middle of the paper. They'd just press space until their titles were roughly in the middle of the paper. Interesting example because I think you'll find people doing that in every decade. My mom does it, BC that's what you'd do on a typewriter. People my manager's age do it. People my age, mid 30s, do it. I think this particular example is just that understanding word processing sucks for every generation. Students lack the tenacity to stick with a task until they figure it out. Most will try once and if they aren't perfect will give up and blame the teacher if they can't do it. I teach physics, 11th grade. They want me to grade each step of each problem before they move forward. And if I don't, some throw temper tantrums. God I freaking hate this about myself. I sit down to do some problem and either get the wrong answer or freeze. I hate how freaking stupid I am. There's some sense of entitlement I've noticed. Like I deserve a better grade or I deserve an extension because this week has been hard. Plus some sense of arrogance. Why should I follow your instructions? My way is better. To be fair, sometimes their way is better and I have learned from them in some occasions. As a college student preparing to teach, I do struggle with giving extensions due to high workload. I understand that you take a lot of hard classes and that mental health is important. But I can't just give you an extra week because you overloaded yourself this semester. Plus, that creates a slippery slope of every kid asking for extensions. Today's students don't know how to struggle or persevere through a problem. If they can't do it immediately, they need help. On the plus side, they know a lot more about each other and are open to diversity. They communicate their emotions. Nothing really. I can only speak for the previous 13 years. I still use the same dang jokes but I just change the references to more recent movies or music. I use slightly different websites but how I interact online or off hasn't changed. I guess there's been a decline in general English ability but that's because English isn't emphasized like it used to be. Sorry not a teacher but a family friend who has been teaching a little over 30 years now once said kids today are bigger, in size, and their clothes are smaller while in the past they were a lot smaller while their clothes were bigger baggier. I'll weigh in on this. Began my career in 1998. Taught in two states. The first big and obvious change is technology. The digital life of my students is robust. They communicate with people, and especially their parents, with total ease and some degree of authority. If something happens, a fight, a disagreement, a lockdown drill, a bad grade, the school will hear about it in 20 minutes, not 24 hours. Additionally, with tech comes the issues of cyberbullying, threats, and general drama that sometimes makes it to the school environment. It's what was always happening, just amplified. Lastly, your whole sense of education shifts when facts and figures can be checked instantly. Dates and people's names are easy referenced. Concepts still need the classroom environment. And let's not get started on how email changed everything. The second issue is that kids today seem way more sensitive to social justice issues. Over the period of years, most of my students have become savvy, aware, woke, 
they are just better citizens, at least in classroom discourse. Of course, there seems to be a greater sensitivity too. I've come to be very careful in my language and assumptions lest I feel the wrath of several 15-17 year olds setting me straight. But I love that they do. Why shouldn't a student correct a teacher? Are they happier? Probably not. Are they still kids? Yes, they are still kids. I would never underestimate the power and creativity of kids from this generation. However, I wouldn't assume that just because the world is at their fingertips, they have a good grasp of it. The brain only matures as biology tells it and if scientists are right, 25 is the end of childhood. Just when I started teaching. The main reason I hated school was how often the teachers were wrong and when I pointed that out I got detention for it. It happened three times with three different teachers before I gave up and just learned to accept that the truth doesn't matter, only authority. But reading this it sounds like you are the sort of teacher I needed and wish that I had. Not a professor, but I'm married to one who's been teaching since 1997, most of the time at a state school. I go out to dinner with him and his colleagues at least once a week so we talk about this stuff a lot. But most of us live in the area right near the school and have noticed that students party with less abandon, and noise, and destruction than they used to. One of the pros guess that's in part because alcohol seems a trifle less important than it used to and weed is more so. And weed seems to make people less angry, noisy, and destructive. Another colleague, who's been there even longer than my husband, thinks it's the phones and on-site recording of everything makes anonymity less possible so people think twice about being buttholes or outrageous. Both ideas seem reasonable to me. Certainly when I walk near campus, I frequently walk through skunky clouds of smoke. Back in my day, pot smelled pretty good, damn it. Jit off my lawn with that nasty smell. The professors all think students' ability to concentrate seems to be weaker, which makes sense in an internet age. When my husband started teaching, cell phones weren't on the scene and it was a lot easier to hold a class's attention. The professors are the ones who have to adapt. I'd have thought that in 2009, students would be more serious about doing their best than now or in the past because of the sudden drying up of jobs meant more competition. But he said no, they are as job oriented these days. And another professor said that their students have a lot of student loans and it's a heavier load. Which means their debt is on their minds. And because they're at a state school, a lot of them are there because of the lower cost. So money is a factor for them. One of his colleagues teaches mostly non-majors and she believes standardized testing has become more pervasive and that's her theory about her observation. Students are less creative and independent than they were 10 years or so ago. I asked my husband if he could think of something else. He said he's taught one particular class twice a year for the last 22 years, an upper level undergrad course. Over all that time, the students haven't actually changed a great deal. The good ones are just as good as the first ones he taught, and the ones who struggle, struggle in the same way as the people he taught years ago. First year teacher but I feel the vulnerability of children is much more abused hence resulting in behavioral and mental impacts student here. What I've noticed is that quite a few teachers and professors have said that it's down to the parenting of the kids. But what is making me think is that these new parents were taught back in the 90s by these teachers, meaning it could be linked directly to the new parents of current students. Therefore the teachers are now likely seeing a second generation of students, which has probably started a chain, and that in maybe 20 years from now the students like me only get worse. Student here. We are taught to solve problems like computers, and when we come across problems outside of our experience most of us will crash just like computers. We are taught to do the problem not understand it. Which is why you can't let school define your life. I never let school define my life, outside of it I try not to think about or associate myself with school. Pop culture references. 1999. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. 2009. Twilight and All Things Vampire. 2019. Fortnite Dances and Memes. As a teen in 2009, I remember boys were expected to pretend to loudly hate Twilight but I kinda miss those days now. NGL. Also we had memes too but referencing them I all was a bit of a faux pas. I went to a high school where you had a class on typing. Early 2000s. On electric typewriters. 
I experienced regular typewriters as a kid but that was more of a novelty than anything. Anyways, I used to hate the class. Typing blind and getting graded on speed and accuracy. Fast forward 15 years later. Turns out 90% of people can't type for crap on anything that's not their computer keyboard. And it's a super useful skill. So little effort is spent on making young people efficient at using the tools at their disposal. Switch the layout to QWERTY, English on literally any custom looking keyboard and I'll be able to type efficiently. As long as I don't look at the keys. That does freak me up like everyone else on a different layout. It was one of the few forward thinking things we actually learned at high school. I have to use different people's keyboards on a weekly basis and people younger and older than me don't really have this skill by and large. This is not a difference between 90s, 2000s or 2010s teachers but something that we all take for granted but most really suck at it. The need for instant gratification due to technology. They have a harder time engaging in critical thinking activities because of standardized testing. Better entrepreneurs. Always bargaining to get the best for them. Teacher of 15 plus years here. Cell phones. These kids brains are exactly the same as their predecessors. Except this generation have unlimited telepathy, information, and p. It's like having a superpower. Along with the complacency and disregard for authority that any superpower would probably confer on its possessor. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.